This lesson covers some things that should be addressed before starting up Final Cut Pro, such as checking some of the basic settings on your computer, setting up an external hard drive, and connecting a camcorder. Before you even start up Final Cut Pro, there are some settings you should check on your Mac and change if necessary. Most of these settings are known as preferences, and I'll go over the preferences that I think are the most important to running Final Cut smoothly and efficiently. First, we'll check on some of the system preferences that might need to be changed. To access the System Preferences settings, go to the Apple logo icon in the top left of the menu bar and select System Preferences. First, let's make sure that the mouse is set up to allow for right-clicking. Open the Keyboard and Mouse Preferences and then click on the Mouse tab. If you're using a standard Mac mouse, you should make sure that the right-click area is assigned as Secondary Button. I prefer to disable the scroll ball button and the side buttons because I find it annoying to have windows suddenly shift or pop up when I press these buttons by accident. Once you've changed the settings for the mouse, we can go back to the main system preferences window by clicking Show All. Next, let's check the dock preferences. If you're new to a Mac, the dock is the bar that sits along the side or the bottom of the desktop and has a row of shortcut icons. It can be annoying to have the dock interfering with your workspace, and the Final Cut Pro workspace works best when the dock is positioned at the bottom edge of the screen and when the dock does not automatically hide and show. I would also turn off the magnification. After you've checked these settings, let's go back to the main system preferences window again. Some other things you may want to check are the screen saver preferences, the energy saver preferences, and the CDs and DVD preferences. I like to keep the screensaver set to kick on only after an hour. And I do the same with the energy saver settings for hard disk and display. Make sure in the energy saver preferences you do not check the box that says put hard disks to sleep when possible. Otherwise your computer and your external hard drive will be powering down and back on while you're working on Final Cut. For the CD-DVD preferences I like to disable the automatic actions that can happen when you insert a CD or DVD. Usually when you insert a CD of material you'd like to use in Final Cut, it's not really helpful for the iTunes application to open up every time. Now that we're done checking the system preferences, I strongly suggest that you lock Final Cut Pro's preferences to their default settings, especially if you're new to Final Cut or if you're working in a multi-user environment where you're sharing a computer with other users. It can be frustrating to start up Final Cut and have it remember all the previous preferences, which may be completely wrong for the project you're working on. I've also found that Final Cut is much more stable if it operates in its default settings without a preferences file. To return Final Cut's preferences to the default settings and to keep Final Cut from creating a custom preferences file, we'll first need to throw away the existing preference file and then lock the folder that contained it. First, make sure that Final Cut Pro is not running, then locate the Final Cut Pro user data folder. To find it, click on your computer's hard drive icon from the desktop, then open the user's folder. Find your main username and open the folder with the house icon. Inside the user folder, find the library folder and open that. Then open the preferences folder and locate the Final Cut Pro user data folder. Inside the user data folder, you'll find the Final Cut Pro preferences file. Right click on this file's icon and move it to the trash or just drag the file into the trash can in the dock. Then empty the trash to delete the file. That removes the preferences file. Now let's make it so that Final Cut won't make another preferences file. Right click on the Final Cut Pro user data folder icon and choose get info from the pop-up menu. In the info window that opens, we're going to make it so that no more files can be written into this folder. To do this, we need to lock the folder by checking the locked checkbox. This will prevent Final Cut from creating a new preferences file inside this folder. Close all these windows and now we can look at connecting and formatting our external hard drive, also known as our scratch disk. Since video material uses a lot of hard drive space, it's a good idea to use an external hard drive as a scratch disk, the place for storing all of your video and other media files. Most USB 2.0 or Firewire hard drives are capable of working with Final Cut Pro. Before you use an external hard drive as a Final Cut Pro scratch disk, you'll want to make sure it's formatted to use with a Mac. Even though a Mac can read a hard drive formatted for a PC, Final Cut can have problems when using a PC formatted hard drive. 
To get started with formatting your external drive, connect the hard drive to your Mac and make sure it's powered on. If you're using a USB hard drive, be sure that you don't connect the USB cable to the ports on the keyboard since they can't transfer data fast enough to be used with video. Once your external hard drive is connected properly, you will see its icon appear on the desktop. If you right click on the external hard drive icon and choose Get Info from the pop-up menu, you can see if the hard drive is already formatted to work with a Mac. In the Format section, it should read Mac OS Extended. If it's a new hard drive, it will probably be Windows NT or MS-DOS FAT32 format and will need to be erased and reformatted. Before you format an external hard drive, you should make sure that you don't need anything that may already be stored on it, since formatting will erase everything on the drive. If you do have files on the external drive that you need to keep, copy them to another drive temporarily while you erase and format your external drive. To format your hard drive for use with a Mac, you'll need to open up the Disk Utility. To open Disk Utility, open the main application folder, then find the Utilities folder and open that. You can also use the Go menu at the top of the screen to find the Utilities folder. Open the Disk Utility, then look for your external hard drive in the list on the left side of the window. Click on your external hard drive icon, then click on the Erase tab. In the Volume Format menu, select Mac OS Extended Journaled. Then you can give your hard drive a name, and then click the Erase button. A warning box will appear reminding you that all the data on the external hard drive will be destroyed. If you're fine with that, click the Erase button to continue. Once the formatting is complete, go ahead and close the disk utility and you're done. Next, let's connect a camcorder to the Mac. In this example, I'm going to show how to connect a mini DV camcorder to the Mac using a FireWire cable. FireWire is also known as IEEE 1394 or iLink, which is what Sony calls it. You'll typically need a FireWire cable that has a small 4-pin connector on one end for the camcorder and a larger 6-pin connector on the other end for the computer. Once you've got your cable, make sure that both connectors are inserted properly, then make sure your camcorder is powered on and set to playback mode, not record mode. Now that you've got the camcorder connected, powered up, and set to play mode, you're just about ready to start up Final Cut Pro.